All right, okay. Woo! You know, yeah. You know, I'm, uh, <laughs> this is, we're getting, we're getting kind of close now to, um, to kind of a, a, a revelatory moment, yeah, kind of a, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, like an epiphany, right? You're going to have an epiphany, maybe, in this video, and you're going to think, oh, oh, now it's starting to make sense. So, yeah, this is an important video. I need to stop pointing like that. Very rude. Rude to point. Anyway, <coughs> so, um, oh, uh, <coughs> Caught my throat there. <coughs> oh. So, in the last video, we were talking about how you can, how the brain is able to control uh, the flow of information between columns and thus sculpt uh, your world model uh, by controlling the connectivity between the columns. And we, we spent quite a bit of time talking about how you, how you do, how the brain does that, uh, and the, the idea that that. Connectivity is not kind of an all or nothing thing, uh, but actually uh, you can you can have strong connections and weak connections, um, and that information when a, when a, when a column is activated, it tends to uh, activate columns to which it is more strongly connected, and this is how the brain, or one of the major ways uh, that the brain can actually um, control the flow of information through uh, across the columns and generate these very kind of precise and stable patterns of activation that are your world model, the world that you're experiencing right now. Okay, so um, in this video, we're gonna take this a little bit further. Um, let's just see how we go. So let's start by kind of recapping uh, where we were in the last um, video and kind of look back at our 12 column um, simplified mold that model that we have been working with. Okay, so here is our 12 column um, model, simplified model, and um, as we saw in the last video, you can have these kind of strong connections here, um, as well as more kind of weaker connections uh, illustrated by the uh, the dotted lines, and that when columns are activated, they tend to activate columns with which they are uh, more strongly um, connected, right? <clears throat> okay, fine. All good. Now let's, um, let's step back a bit and let's, uh, let's just look at a single uh, column first of all. Well, actually, no, we're going to look at three columns. What am I talking about? Um, so we'll start with this, this central column. Uh, which we'll we'll uh, we'll call column number two. Why column number two? Well, because we're going to look at these three columns that are in a row. So column one, two, and three. And the reason that we're going to talk about these three columns is firstly because they're nicely lined up like that, so that kind of helps. Uh, and also because column two is connected to column one with a kind of a, a strong connection. Uh, but it's connected to column three with a weaker connection. So we can uh, we can use that to illustrate the point that I'm about to make. So let's start by imagining that pyramidal cell, that you know, column two is active as, as we can see here. Um, and let's actually look at the firing of one of its pyramidal cells. So let's move on. So this is one of the pyramidal cells in um, column two. Uh, and let's imagine it fires an action potential. So the action potential, of course, it starts from the axon hillock, then it spreads along the axon, um, and then it reaches the synaptic bouton, where it releases the neurotransmitter um, to be passed to the dendrites of any, any pyramidal cells to which it is connected. Um, so we can see this on this familiar diagraph uh, now um, that, you know, that perhaps this um, pyramidal cell has been receiving inputs via its dendrites, um, and it reaches the threshold potential, and of course it fires an action potential, which looks kind of like this. So now let's look at how this um, pyramidal cell in column two is connected. Well, we already kind of know. We know it's connected to columns um, 
1 and 3. So here is our column, column 1, column 2, which is the one that's firing, and column 3 here. So this was our action potential coming from um, column 2. Now, we've we already saw that column 1 and 2 are connected together very strongly, and I've indicated that uh, with this kind of large synaptic bouton. And you know now, you're, you're an expert on, on how, you know, what exactly I mean by a strong connection. So I'm not going to go over that. And the connection between 2 and 3 is a weaker one, so I've shown that by a, um, a smaller synaptic bouton. But again, you understand what I mean by a weaker connection. Um, okay, now, and, and, and again, I have, I've simplified this, I've kind of imagined that there's a single pyramidal cell here that is connected to both uh, columns 1 and 3. You know, in reality, there are many pyramidal cells coming from, um, or many pyramidal cell axons coming from um, column 2, but this kind of branching of a single axon is kind of possible, but it doesn't matter, the principle uh, is exactly the same. Okay, so let's look. So we, we've seen that column two has just fired an action potential. Um, so let's have a look at the effects on the, the postsynaptic cells. In other words, the pyramidal cells in, uh, in uh, columns three and one. So we'll start on the right with uh, pyramidal cell in column three, and I've draw, got these graphs again prepared. So it, the column well, no, the, the pyramidal cell in column three here is sitting at its resting potential. Um, an action potential is uh, fired by um, column two, let's say at this point, action potential. Um, and then after a brief delay, it causes a, an EPSP in um, the dendrites of column three. So there's your EPSP and a rather small one because it is a weak connection. What about on the left? Um, in uh, pyramidal cell of column one. Well, again, it's sitting in its resting potential. Here comes the old action potential. Boom, here. And uh, it generates a much bigger EPSP because it's a stronger connection. And in fact, this time it reaches threshold and it fires an action potential. So what has happened here? Well, column two has successfully activated column one but it has failed to activate column three. And this is precisely what we expected to happen, right? Um, we have a strong connection between two and one, and it activates um, column one, column two activates column one, but fails to activate um, column uh, one. Did I say that right? I think so, yes. Uh, sorry. Column two activates column one, but fails to activate column three, uh, and this is exactly what we, we spoke about in the last video, but now it should make perfect sense to you exactly why that is the case. Um, the action potentials coming from um, column two failed to push uh, the, the pyramidal cells of column three over their threshold. Okay. Okay, so hopefully that's perfectly clear. So what we're going to do now is something that may at first seem a little bit odd, uh, but it will reveal itself to be extremely important, or an extremely important clue uh, as to the effect of psychedelic drugs. And if you were thinking, if you, if you paid attention um, in, 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 in the last unit and the unit before, uh, then, you, then little cogs should start spinning in your head as I'm doing this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that whole exercise again, starting from these three columns, with one of them being an active, column two is active. However, before we do that, we're going to depolarize all of uh, all of the columns, basically. So all 12 columns will just push the membrane potential upwards. So in other words, that we will the the resting potential won't be sat at its normal level, you know, minus 70 or whatever, uh, but will will be pushed upwards. Again, the amount doesn't matter here, uh, but you have to have this idea that we're we're not generating an EPSP in these columns. We're actually lifting. Uh, the resting potential higher. We are depolarizing stably uh, all of these columns. Why am I doing that? Well, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the effect of doing that. Okay, so 
Um, so here we are back at square one. However, this time you will notice, just to kind of make it clear to you, um, I have colored the these outer, uh, the rims of these columns are kind of a, what is that, teal maybe, turquoise, something like that. So this indicates that we have depolarized them. Uh, but again, we're starting from exactly the same position. Uh, we've got column two is active, column one and three, which we're going to be looking at, are inactive. So let's have a look at how this works. So again, column one and two and three. And uh, column two, of course, is firing its action potential. Now, originally, in the, la in the last time, and it won't hurt, won't hurt to go over this again, it sits at its resting potential, we get a little, uh, we get the action potential arriving, uh, and we get a little EPSP like this, um, which doesn't cause it to fire. On the right, again, uh, column one, the pyramidal cell in column one is sitting at its resting potential, we get the uh, the action potential or the EPSP received essentially from column uh, the pyramidal cell in column two. We know it rises, reaches threshold. It's a bigger EPSP. It's a stronger connection, and we actually get an action potential here. So now then, let's actually raise the, as I said, let's actually raise the membrane potential um, of of the columns. So we're gonna they're gonna sit now. Let's say here. So we've pushed the membrane potential upwards by kind of this amount. Um, so this is in the new resting potential. You know, you might want to, you might call that, you know, RP star if you like. It doesn't matter what you call it. Um, so what's going to happen? So let's do this in yellow. Um, so now again, the resting potential is here now. So it sits here. We get the EPSP. It's exactly the same EPSP that but of course you no know, of course we know this is going to fire fires an action potential which goes back to its higher resting potential nothing particularly interesting happening uh, there however let's have a look at the pyramidal cell in column three it's now sitting at its new uh, resting potential it's depolarized level resting potential rp star uh, it receives exactly the same epsp however whoop, it now pushes it over the threshold and it fires an action potential. Oh, this is interesting. So what actually happens then uh, when we look at the columns? So let's have a look. So we start now with, uh, again, with um, column two is active here. And before we only activated column one, um, whereas now we actually activate column one and Three. So in other words, the information um, generated by column two is kind of escaped out of this well-established pattern of um, column connectivity because of this depolarization effect. So we might then uh, get activation of this column and then, um, in fact, Perhaps this column will, for reasons that exactly the same reasons, this column here, which doesn't have a what we call in column zero maybe, um, is actually able to activate this one, uh, and you know we could go on. But basically, rather than having this very um, strict um, pattern and well-established stable pattern of activity that um, that is kind of dictated almost by the connectivity. Uh, we, we get this completely novel and new pattern of activity that, that's in, in, a fact, in, a, in, in effect is, is a little bit more disorganized um, because th there isn't this control anymore, uh, or, uh, control held by the, uh, the patterns of strong connectivity versus weak connectivity because now even weak connections can actually transmit information because they're uh, because the membrane, the resting membrane brain potential uh, has been raised. Okay, I'm going to let that sink in. This, that was a really important illustration there. Um, you might, if you were paying attention, you might start thinking, well, wait a minute, this kind of feels like the world model would be kind of disrupted here. You know, the, the patterns of connectivity 
between the columns, they sculpt the world model, this stable model of reality that we live within. If information starts flowing outside uh, of these um, established patterns of connectivity, then the world model is going to start to be disrupted and it's going to start to change, no? Yes, exactly. Um, but I'm going to let that sink in and let you integrate that. Watch it again. If, if the significance of it isn't clear to you, then please do watch it again until it is. And then we will talk about this a lot more and develop this idea a lot more in the upcoming videos. So I'll definitely see you then. Peace. I'm kidding. Uh, however, if, um, if you do want to support the production of future courses or you just want to leave a tip, um, then there are virtual tip boxes below. There's PayPal, Ko-fi, Ko whatever it is, even a Bitcoin address if that is your thing. Minimally, please like and subscribe. It really helps me. And please follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you use them, Alien Insect. And I think that's about it. I hope you're enjoying the course. Thank you.